And so, if you have been looking at my social media for the last few days or a week, you will know that today's episode features Mr. Ari Tula of Elo Health. Ari is a San Francisco-based entrepreneur and the co-founder and CEO of the smart nutrition service Elo, whose mission is to transform food from the leading cause of disease to medicine. Ari is also a st- an active angel investor and advisor with a portfolio of 40 startups, including Verta Health, Good Eggs, and Aura. And we do talk about Aura today. Um, Ari and I have some kind of contacts in common and go into the history. And I really try and understand where this company comes from, because with someone like Ari Tuller, this is not the first time they have been a pioneer in technology and in healthcare. And so I really wanted to understand where he came from and why now Elo. And previously, Ari was the CEO of Quest Analytics, the market leader in doctor data and network management. Ari led the company through a pivotal growth stage from 15 million to 40 million in revenue. Before joining Quest Analytics, Ari was co-founder and CEO of Better Doctor, a doctor search engine. Better Doctor raised 30 million from first year investors, including NEA and Uncork Capital. And in June 2018, Better Doctor was acquired by private equity firm Vestar Capital. Before Better Doctor, Ari led Nokia's game and application studios, and we do talk about that today and the genesis from Nokia to now. This conversation really is about the forefront of healthcare. It's about how can we make it simple for the masses to access personalized, useful health information, which isn't overwhelming, doesn't dominate with one specific opinion, but really focuses on true healing and whole human care, which you've heard me speak about a lot. So without further ado, I shall introduce Ari and let you listen to his wisdom and his brilliant ideas about the future of modern medicine. I'm excited for this conversation today. I am going to try and not make it a total geek fest with my guest, Mr. Ari Tula. I am so delighted that you're here because there's so many things that I want to talk to you about. But as a way into this for my listeners, how about you just give us an idea of what you're currently doing at this moment in the world to change the face of healthcare? Because it really feels like, to me, that's what you're doing. Yeah, thank you. Great to be here. Um, So my my focus is today to, and, and has been for quite a while already, is to build things that uh, can help people live better lives. And, and that's a simple concept, but you know, pretty complicated to achieve. <laughs> so I, I spent a, a decade focusing at first on how do we help people find the right care when they need it. And we've all been there, we've all been sick. And when you are sick, you are at your weakest. And the system today in the US, especially, is not easy for you to navigate and find the right care. So I uh, started the company there, helped about 200 million people in the last decade, feeling great about it. And now I'm trying to do the same thing a bit for, for nutrition, help people mm-hmm. uh, to eat and have nutrition that can help them to stay healthy. And mm-hmm. ideally, I hope in the future also reverse um, conditions you might have today. So mm-hmm. that's what, what what I focus on today. Mm-hmm. And so I, I'd love you to just explain explain your philosophy on the food as medicine concept. It's a phrase that we hear a lot. It's a phrase that I think people say without fully having a, a real meaning behind it, but I'd love you to share with my listeners the kind of, what does it mean to you when we say food as medicine? Yeah, it's an old idea. Uh, Hippocrates uh, talked about it 2000 years ago. We had no Twitter then, so we can't go and verify whether he did or not. <laughs> yes. Let's let's take the annals and you know the historians and mm-hmm. the word of mouth, multiple different generations that he did yeah. say that you know food is thy medicine and you are what you eat. That's I think what we believe he did. And if he did, I think that's pretty pretty powerful and cool if he thought about that that long ago. And uh, we have maybe regressed a little bit in the last 2000 years and not really thought about that for a long time. Mm-hmm. And in you know, 50s, 60s, 70s, we, we started to create a food system that is super efficient. Um, we complain about the price of food today because of the inflation. And I mean, it's real pain for people. I mean, we don't love to pay more for the eggs or the bacon or whatever. Mm-hmm. But at the same time, food is still today cheaper than yeah. it's ever really been. Uh, in the last 2000 years and mm. in the, in the US as you know people who travel i mean they know that the food is still very affordable we mm. pay less for food per per person's income here than we pay anywhere else in the world yeah so yes it's increasing price but you know we create a system that can feed hundreds of millions or billions of people very effectively at the decent cost at the same time we have forgotten a little bit what food is we have created this concoction of food that is hyper-processed, 
um, uh, addictive um, and 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 kind of stuff that we probably should not eat, and we are all pretty much eating it today. So mm-hmm. food as medicine is the opposite of the, the food system today. Mm-hmm. It is the food we, we should put in our mouth and in our mm-hmm. bodies that can keep us healthy and even reverse the conditions that we are now causing by the, the processed food, uh, the stationary lifestyle we have, mm-hmm. and the, the stress and lack of sleep that we are putting us in every day. Mm-hmm. Um, and as a, as a concept, I mean, it's not complicated. I mean, many of our moms told us what to do, uh, you know, eat, eat your vegetables and, uh, you know, sleep well and, and go out and move enough. I mean, that's kind of what we should do, but it's very difficult to do because we are living in this world that is giving us too many um, exciting inputs every day from the smartphones and the world around us. Every, you know, end of the aisle in the grocery store, stuff you should never eat, everything that you have on the menu or the table, you should never take that. <laughs> Most things in the top of the menu, you should never eat. Every yeah. ad you see in the TV is stuff that you should never touch. How can we be living in the world that, you know, is doing that for us? Mm-hmm. And we legally let that happen. I mean, mm-hmm. it feels like if that's like, if every Super Bowl ad is something edible stuff, is something that you, know, you should never touch. Like, yeah. how can it be legal? Like, I, of course, I want to do that because it's told me that I, I, I'll be more beautiful and more successful and, you know, better if I do. So we are very vulnerable. And mm-hmm. um, and I, I think like it really is about building better systems to, to change behavior, mm-hmm. in my opinion. And it's about uh, uh, building education in a very simple way that people actually can do the right thing. We all want to do the right thing. Right. Uh, yet we can't because of the system is so complicated. Mm-hmm. And it also seems like even if we're trying to do the right thing, the 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 agriculture, the the foods that we can purchase these days, even if we're eating from the vegetable and fruit aisle and around the edges of the grocery store, mm-hmm. it's still nutrient deficient. And we're seeing a lot of problems, even in people. I mean, I eat really healthily, and I do my blood panels, and I'm like, ha. Huh somehow this is not enough for me and and that i feel is speaking into your your next project in terms of what you're doing in in terms of with elo which i'd love you to speak about because this feels like i've always and i'm just gonna like hold my hand up here i've always been very skeptical about companies like yours because when they started a while back they were terrible (laughs) but this the tech has come along and i really love the way you approach it so can you explain to us the kind of supplements that you're creating with your current company yeah so elo health is um is a company that um we are we are trying to create um, a new concept and uh, we call it uh, smart nutrition and um, it may be new to you maybe i mean i think i probably coined it <laughs> so it's a new thing and i would love to you know make that uh, to be not just the thing we talk about at the elo uh, but a broader thing mm. what smart means in in my opinion and maybe take a, uh, maybe i take a step back and, and talk about my past so i mm. i spent about 20 years in the tech building many different things um i was lucky enough to to join uh, a small finnish company called nokia about uh, 17 years ago. And I joined the team that built the first smartphone. That was before iPhone and Android. And the first phone, you can actually, you know, take video, take photos, read emails, browse the web. Yeah. Not, not as good as your latest iPhone Pro, Pro or whatever, you know, pixel you have. But, yeah. you know, it was the first thing that could do it. And I remember, well, back in the days, we were hashing out this launch ideas of the new a product that was called N95, you know, it sold in the end, I think 10 million units and, you know, made billion dollar money for the company. It's a big deal yeah, then. Big it deal. started yeah. this new era we have, but mm-hmm. we did not call it smartphone. We called it mobile computer. And we had a smartphone on the wall to call it that, but we did not. Somebody made a call, let's call it mobile computer. We made a mistake. Right. The smartphone was the word that stuck and we yeah. all call them now. And that became the most impactful product that I think humans have ever invented. You know, it changed our life more fundamentally than a wheel or money almost. We spent five hours today right. staring Just at this screen. Yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah. So, I mean, being there early on, so I have a perspective that very few people don't have. And I saw the data early on when only the people in Nokia were using it. And suddenly nobody made phone calls. People spent like five hours taking photos and videos and doing other stuff. So it changed <laughs> the paradigm. Yeah. So what is smart in that context? It's basically, um, uh, it's personalized. 
think about the phone is your most personal thing you have. Mm -hmm. You know, smart car is your Tesla or whatever, that you walk into it with your phone in your pocket and it moves the seat automatically. The mirrors move to you. The, the music is your music. So it becomes, it's personalized. Mm -hmm. Same happens to a smart home. What is it also? It's also precise. It's grounded and built upon the latest science. Like it uses tech, the latest ideas, the, the fact, facts of the world. And then thirdly, it is always proactive. Think about your, your phone becomes better with you. I mean, right. is it good or bad we use phones that lot that much? I mean, I think phones might have be might be the biggest addiction we ever created in the world. Yeah. So I don't know if it's a good or bad, but I mean they are amazing, powerful devices. Mm -hmm. Same with you know the, the car, you know, Tesla. Mm -hmm. You drive the Tesla and it learns about your behavior, it gets better at being a good car for you. So that's what we're trying to build at Elo for nutrition. Mm -hmm. Personalized, make it right for you. Mm -hmm. Create it for you. We we make every product for you at the at the factory or at the place we create them. It's mm -hmm. you know precise. It's grounded in real science. And thirdly, it gets better over time. The taste gets better over time. The outcomes get better over time. That's what we're trying to build. And I think it's a good idea. Uh, it's still very early, mm -hmm. and I hope it can be one of these small things that are able to make this food as medicine, food as medicine type of idea right. real. Yeah. So at Elo, we do more concrete terms. We are, um, we have two products today. We have blood biomarker-based uh, supplements where we take a, a blood test in the beginning. We use that test result to find and fill your nutrient gaps. Mm -hmm. We send you, you know, pills in a daily package that have the right you know, nutrients, and then we track you again. And we mm -hmm. also throw in the mix uh, a dietitian who will work with you one-on-one. -on -one. You can meet them over the Zoom, you can meet them over the app, you can talk 24 seven if you want with them. Um, so that's something we created and we have had now thousands of people who have signed up. We have had outcomes where almost 90% of people see a real outcome on the blood biomarker values by month six. These yeah. are things like, you know, um, impacting the cholesterol levels, LDL, vitamin, mineral levels, even A1C in some cases. It doesn't mm -hmm. happen only because of the pills, mm -hmm. but it happens because the codes, and you know you know this better than anyone, you, you do this mm -hmm. every day, the codes can help you change behavior, and the app is there with you along the way. That was the mm -hmm. first product we got out a year and a half ago, two years ago. The second product we got out recently, it's a smart recovery powder. It is a powder where we are customizing it based on what you want. You can have in there... Uh, protein, carbs, electrolytes, uh, multivitamin or, or minerals and vitamins, and even even greens and mushrooms. And then we de we define what is the blending and the composition based on your data coming from your wearable devices. We get your recovery data, your sleep, your HRV. We are getting your activities and workouts, mm -hmm. and we design every month another blend that is the ideal blend for you for your recovery. We ask mm -hmm. you in the morning after your workout, are you feeling recovered? How are you feeling and so forth? And we built a feedback loop daily to make it better. Mm -hmm. And that's been a really fun product to get out because what it does also, it notifies you after every workout. Maybe you use Peloton or you use you know, Strava to go for a walk or mm -hmm. you use you know, something more hardcore. Um, once you track a workout, you can link it to Elo automatically via Apple Help. And then we tell you after the workout how much recovery product you need exactly to, to recover at optimal level. And that's something new that, I mean, has never been built before. And it's been really fun to hear people's feedback in the last few months. And we had a six-month pilot before. Some people absolutely love that because even like top athletes, they don't know what no, to do after. There hasn't mm -hmm. never been this sort of feedback loop in nutrition. And the idea is to take this further. Like these are the two products. We're going to have a third one coming uh, end of the year. I can't talk about it. It's Super secret, super cool. <laughs> I'm, I'm really excited about it. And then, yeah. but we, we want to go all the way into, you know, meals and like meal delivery, food mm -hmm. delivery, groceries, but mm -hmm. it is really difficult. So it will take us maybe two or three years to get there. Oh, well, two or three years is still short for the, what you're trying to achieve. But this is, this stuff fascinates me. I have been in the world of wearables since it kind of became a thing. Like I had one of the first aura rings, one of the first, like I was there at the start of this. And the usability of this data has changed drastically in the sort of five or six years since that, that this all began. And then what I look at now is 
sometimes I look at these devices and think, but but why? Like, is is your HRV score just there to beat you up because you didn't sleep well or whatever? And it feels like people are either obsessed with it or not using it in the right way. And it's always been, to my mind, there needs to be a coach on the other side of it, like you were speaking to about your dietitian. And I love that you're doing that at your company because it it really does set the precedent that this isn't just a magic pill. This is a really helpful supportive supplement and you got, you're going to need to change some behaviors at the same time. Um, but when it comes to this, using the wearables data in an actionable way, which means that you're not just slamming your, you know, BCAAs before or after a workout or whatever it is, you're actually recovering effectively. This seems genius to me. And I feel like this is kind of like a real, you. I don't know of any com- other company that's, that's doing this, which is exciting. And so, so what data are you actually, where, uh, what wearables are people using? Is it any wearable that, that, that's on the market? Do you have to use specifics? What Can we get into a bit of the details on this one? Yeah, and let, let me let me maybe you know touch up a bit first. Um, so your point about the the wearables are quite a new thing, and um, and it was really fun to be at you know at the Nokia at the heyday because right. you know when we were working on these phones, um, there was a team you know sitting next to me actually like next to me we were, we were like yeah. when we were in the office like you know here now yeah. it's like I don't know where, <laughs> yeah. but um, but some people were looking at the the phone and they realized that there was a chip in that N ninety five. First time ever in the phone or in a in a in a device like that. Maybe first time ever in any device. They mm-hmm. took this new chip in there that mm-hmm. basically was rotating the photos. If you took a photo, landscape, a portrait, it yeah. automatically recognized that. Yeah. So there was a chip doing that, and mm-hmm. that was the same chip that these guys they were asking like, what more could we do with this? What does it do? And the team built the first step counter. This was about 17 years ago. Oh, yeah. So they invented the step counter. And I was there in a room when we think about the first time, what to do with it. Like what? And they built an algo and we tested it in, in-house. We loved it. We did the 10,000 steps. You know, somebody found an idea and it became the thing. Like they invented this 10,000 steps we all do now, billion yeah. people every year. And I was there when it started. And yeah. it became interesting because it, it changed my life. It changed my behavior. And that was the moment when I realized that if you can measure something, you can improve it. Yeah. And that's all they are, these devices. They are yeah. building us these measurements of our body in real time. Mm-hmm. And if we measure something, we can improve it. Mm-hmm. And that's the whole ethos of, you know, ELO. That's why we built these loops. Because if you, can, you can't measure nutrition. Today, how you do it, you can, you can feel you know, I always talk about this, that men and women are different. Women are much better at feeling their body. Men don't know if they are thirsty or hungry. They really, <laughs> but half of them don't know. They don't know. I mean, it's yeah. insane. Mm-hmm. And you know, my wife, you know, um, I started the company because of her health conditions. And she can feel like if her kidneys are not okay. I, I don't know if I need to go pee. I mean, like, we are very different in that way. And men, mm-hmm. I think we have, like, less receptors in our brain for pain and understanding our body. That's another story that we could do another podcast. But the point <laughs> is that you have to be able to measure in yeah. order to be able to improve. Mm-hmm. And, and that's the whole value. So at ELO, what we do, we wanted to build a system that is not going to be requiring a one device. You don't need to buy a new device. At minimum, you can use a phone you have. We are only available today on iPhone because iPhone... And Apple has created this amazing thing called Apple Health. Mm-hmm. And app, you might have heard about it. It's in your phone if you have Apple phone. It, it is already collecting your steps. It is yeah. collecting your activities and workouts. If you have your phone with you, as you always do, it is doing it automatically. The data is there already. You might have 10 years of data that you have <laughs> never looked at before. Yeah. You, the yeah. rings are the things that are the manifestation, but there's a, plenty more data. Yeah. Apple Health today is basically a health vault. And health vault means that you can connect to it any wearable device you want. You can connect your Aura Ring, you can connect your Whoop, you can connect your Peloton, you can connect your Strava, all the apps. And I think the only thing that doesn't collect now natively is Fitbit. Why? Mm-hmm. Because they were bought by Google. So there's the reason. Yeah. And Google and Apple don't don't really play ball. They but they talk to each Fitbit other. To Apple, Google Health, of course. <laughs> right. So App Elo uses that Apple Health uh, vault, and we use it because it's also really great for privacy perspective. You can mm. define the settings. You can turn it on and off. Mm-hmm. You can define on and off different level. So yeah. m- most people don't know this, but today 
you can also connect your health data, your medical record to Apple yeah. Health. You mm -hmm. can connect your lab data from your Quest Labs and LabCorp and elsewhere. So that is the power that we finally have a vault that we can move health data securely. And we give you the right to mod modulate, you know, who is seeing it, when they see it, or what Elo is seeing, for example. Mm -hmm. And it's interesting because, you know, my, my co-founder, he spent a decade at Apple and he was one of the key people creating this idea. Mm -hmm. uh, so we have a really long, you know, history within the Elo team on understanding the, the importance of this. And I was, by the way, in the last, last, last companies, I was writing laws uh, with, the, with the, you know, US, you know, <laughs> decision makers about how do we share data? How do we make data portable? That is, right. in my opinion, one of the key problems that today, like I said, we think about how we feel about nutrition or we use mm -hmm. a scale. Scale is a really bad way of measuring something because it's not never going to be daily feedback loop. Mm -hmm. It will be like a month in rear view mirror. Mm -hmm. So any device you connect to Apple, you connect to Elo, uh, we are trying to take that data in and normalize it. It's not easy. Um, so there's a lot of you know challenges there. And, um, and that's the biggest maybe problem today technically. How do we get all the data and make it meaningful? Because yeah. wearable devices today, last point on this topic is that all the devices are giving you data and they are getting better every day of telling you so what okay mm. you had low hrv so what okay go mm. sleep earlier uh you had you didn't walk yesterday so what walk more today you are sitting down for too long in zoom meetings so what T take a walk but they are really bad at telling you then what and elo everything we do at elo is about telling you then what and not only telling you but sending you the right nutrition automatically that you need. Mm -hmm. And that's the next level thing I think we're trying to do. Yeah, it's it's really joining up this kind of, we have a load of data and it's always struck me how much more data there is uh, than we see on the front end. As you said, those little rings that we all look at at Apple, it's like, that's such a fragment. I remember speaking to the Aura team right at the beginning and we were like, well, can we get daily HRV? And they were like, we're measuring so much all the time. And I was like, oh, Okay. And once you're in this kind of health tech world, you realize just how much is available. But what we're re what we've really been looking for is the target of that information, making meaning out of it. And I think Aura have gotten vastly better in, in the years in terms of like, well, what do all these algorithms mean? But I think people think it's easy to just take the HRV, the wakefulness, the whatever, and then come up with a readiness score it's actually really damn hard there's a lot of like calculations that go in so i can only imagine that it's even infinitely harder when you're dealing with nutrition because nutrition is a field that's vast and it's it's so interwoven and complex within individuals and i feel like i, I really love how you you keep saying it, it's going to be hard it's going to take us some time but i i just love that you've started to begin with because it feels like there's this real need to make this actionable and to actually say to people, well, you don't need to actually get a coach on board. You can just have all of your data and then there's algorithms to tell you how to then behave, what to take, what to, to put into your body to recover. There are three things that, um, that made um, ELO possible. So I, I had this idea about um, 11, 12 years ago to build mm -hmm. a company we called it um, social food. And the idea was simply that you take your phone and you point your camera to a product mm -hmm. and it uses the barcode or code in the product to tell you if that's green, yellow or red for you right. yeah. based on your own behaviors and your diet or whatnot. So kind of the same idea what we are doing today, but mm -hmm. uh, that was the best you could do at that time. And there yeah. was a company actually from the design agency IDEO who built that company then maybe a year later we did test it out in a small vitriol and we felt it was too complicated. You can't go in a store and, you know, point, you know, every product. Anyway, yeah. that company was built and they raised $30 million and, you know, yeah. in the end they sold it to somebody as a database. Mm -hmm. So it was a good call not to build it then. But why can we do it today? Oh, we can do parts of this today really well. Number one, what has changed in decade is that um, uh, the wearable devices became ubiquitous. We all have a device. Like I have a, I have an Oura ring, I have an Apple Watch Ultra, I have a Whoop here. Um, and I've been, like I said, you know, I was early on there tracking the steps and then I was lucky enough to be able to invest in the Aura in the first round of funding like eight years ago. And, and you know, they are from my hometown. They're also from Finland. So kind of fun how many things happened there. Also, Polar, 
the the heart rate more yeah. more it's from my hometown as well same town mm-hmm. so mm-hmm. there's a lot of you know talent that came from nokia and elsewhere who built these new yeah. ideas yeah. um but you know the first was like we have more data kind of flowing out of our bodies and now we know about sleep about recovery about your workouts and activities we can look at your heart uh rate in a way that we can understand the afib and stuff like that so we are saving people's lives now with these devices but it's still a very one-sided view mainly based on your body moving which is the step counter or the accelerometer sit we had you know in the nokia device and then it's about light in your in your wrist or in your finger looking or it can be also in your in your shoulder but looking at you know what's happening in your blood like like what is the heart rate you can look at you know movement of the heart you can look at the uh, electric pulse of the heart or you can look at the stuff happening in your veins like many of these do and now the next level is to take a deeper look inside uh your body and mm-hmm. getting deeper into it without breaking the skin i mean many of us have heard about the uh the glucose monitors today um i've been wearing you know one of them for three years now and it is really insightful in the beginning, but it's too hard. There's a needle, it costs 50 bucks each for two weeks. So too expensive, too complicated, yeah. but that will be in your wrist yeah. or finger in about two or three or four years from now. And that yeah. will change everything because then you finally have a real time mm-hmm. measurement on mm-hmm. glucose and ketones mm-hmm. and some mm-hmm. of those things. And mm-hmm. once we can do the glucose, people don't talk about this. It wasn't really talked about when this news came out or the leak leak about Apple maybe doing it. Of course, they're doing it. Um, it came <laughs> out. But, you know, when you can do that, uh, mm-hmm. people don't realize that glucose is the most difficult liquid to measure. I yeah. mean, think about it. glucose is sugar. Put sugar yeah. in a glass of water. It, it is going to be see-through. It's completely soluble, so you don't yeah. see it. Many yeah. other things, like you know, talk about cholesterols and and others. They are much easier. So once mm-hmm. we crack this. Mm-hmm. Wait a moment, and we're going to have a full blood panel, real-time basis from your blood, including yeah. some hormones. And that will be a game changer because then mm-hmm. we have a system that you can do something and then you can see the outcomes immediately. And yeah. there's no debate when we get the full blood panel flowing. In in decade, this is going to be in a billion people's wrist or finger. Yeah. And I think we can build a whole other health system. So. That is a big reason why we believe that these kind of companies like Elo will flourish. The second point is more simple. Second point is about you know blood testing became and testing became more at home. We mm-hmm. collect at home today and we can test in a lab. In five years from today, we can do the same we do for the swap that we do for COVID. You can take uh, saliva, bugger or blood uh, or maybe urine. You can put it in a, in a thing at home and you get all the results right then and there. That's going yeah. to be really powerful. And you can test things that you can't really do with light um, or laser on a wrist. Yeah. And thirdly, yeah. what yeah. happened, which is a huge thing, that this is the most uncertain thing when we started L a few years ago before COVID. We didn't know if the food delivery and nutrition delivery will happen. It did happen. And now we all have tried it out. And right. there's no way back in the world where we you can't order things to your home directly. Mm-hmm. And those three aspects, wearables, the testing at home, and then the food delivery make this possible today. Yeah, I, I love that you're sharing this. And I think for my listeners who aren't in this like health techie world, it's we've been talking about a lot of this for a long time. I really love that you connected the Finland thing for me because in my brain at the back, because I was hanging out with the Pateri at the beginning of Aura and I was like, why are all these people coming out of Finland? And it's like, oh, it's the Nokia connection. <laughs> That's why. Um, but I feel like there's this element of, um, you know, we've had so many great ideas, but cracking this code and i think people don't realize how little glucose there is in your bloodstream at any one moment in time it's like it's not like it's like thick sugary blood it's just we're talking micro fragments of glucose that we're trying to measure with light and it's like it is possible we will get there um and we will get there and then we will need to make it smaller so you know i've got a cgm what we you know this data is great and it's interesting and it's it really personalizing things but it i i love this kind of idea of it coming sooner and i and i also feel like there's this this at home testing i run a medical clinic it is the most difficult thing to get the phlebotomist to the house to get the blood to get the 
I don't know why it's so complicated, but it just seems to be fraught with error, fraught with like, did we centrifuge the blood sample? Did we? Just so many points of failure that every single sample I'm like, oh, it went wrong. And I'm really excited for the days where I, I was at, I think I was in Helsinki actually. And there was this like toilet that was like, you could just go to the toilet and the toilet seat or something in the toilet would tell you what you need. And I was like, this is genius. I mean, I don't know that it's accurate yet, but like, it's going to be genius when we get there. And it feels like this is the way to really bring the economies of scale and actually allow us to get this out to the masses and actually change the health of nations. Because if we keep doing it the way we're doing it, we are going to bankrupt our governments. We're going to like break our healthcare systems and we're just not going to have a healthy society at the end of the day. I, I mean, it, it's something that I, I posted lately. There was a new study. Uh, it comes, uh, I think, a year or two behind the the, the date. But when they're looking at um, life expectancy, mortality, mm-hmm. and, and the new data is, um, is very, very alarming. Mm-hmm. And um, it just came a few weeks ago, but people haven't seen it. But it basically says that, you know, we have, we are six and a half years lower on average life ex- expectancy in the US today compared to the comparable countries in EU, uh, UK or Australia. Uh, mm-hmm. Japan today is uh, 84.5. Mm-hmm. Uh, in the US, we are 76. We have lost wow. 2.5 years of life expectancy in the last three years. Wow. No other well, country has lost that. less than, no other country has lost than more than one in the world. I wonder what the COVID impact in America was on that as well would be my... It's a COVID impact, uh, but the COVID impact is more about the comorbidity impact of uh, the obesity crisis. And then we have the opioids. Uh, Those are, of course, and and guns impact here a bit, but those are three elements. And the biggest one being that, you know, we are sicker as a nation than in the country. This year, we're going to be 50% obese. First time ever any country in the world has gone 50% obese in adult population. It will be cracked sometime this year. 80% of people are overweight. Uh, and that's impacting on the other things that, you know, we have. Right. And we spend, by the way, we spend double amount in healthcare than any other country in the world per, per, yeah. person. per person. And we get the outcomes that look like we are dipping. We are like plummeting in life expectancy, which is a pretty key measurement if you think about it. And no other country had the same dip in the COVID. Yeah. So that, yeah. that, there's no like a question, you know, we we have to do something. It's not like... A, like a nice to do. This is an emergency. I mean, we have to do something about this. Otherwise, um, you know, Russia is the only country where you know people have been living less and less, and the men are now. I think not not because of the war, but because of the unhealthy habits and alcohol. Uh, yeah. Men are living under seventy years old today. Mm-hmm. I mean, that's like there's no country in Africa today, barely, where you have lower um, life expectancy than there. So we don't want to mm-hmm. be another country like that in the U.S. No, and it seems like you know we can't make a case for that to be the we're spending so much money and this is the thing that like it's like it's just a misallocation of resources as far as i'm concerned it's like the money that we're spending over there in sick care in this kind of like how do we put people on a lifetime of prescriptions because their illness is such that if and lifestyle derived illness is such that they now have a diagnosis which is going to last a lifetime whether that's you know some kind of metabolic syndrome some kind of heart disease some kind of neurodegeneration all of these things have huge lifestyle components but i kind of have compassion for people because there hasn't been anywhere else to find information that seems singular and obvious because everyone that I get in my clinic is like, oh my God, Google's a crazy territory of like misinformation and also generalized information. So I really love what you guys are doing in the personalization of it, which it feels like it's the only way we can really do this. And I think, you know, we are trying to build this world and, and, you know, I, I believe that if you build a new idea, like what Elo is doing, it's a, like, it's pretty groundbreaking, but, you know, how, how many people would have thought 10 years ago that you could take a, a blood test at home and then you get uh, supplements that are impacting that you get lifestyle coaching. And then after six months, you can test again and you are seeing results. I mean, that was like science fiction. Mm-hmm. Um, or even like the idea that we can actually, you know, create products on the fly for you, put your name on in, in them. Um, that's also pretty science fiction. So, But we know that we are doing new things. The new things are often quite expensive and mm-hmm. they are not for everybody. So today we are trying to really hard to put the price point down. The mm-hmm. supplements are $99 a month. Mm-hmm. Uh, the, the powder is 59 bucks a month. You know, could be, there's a cheaper product out there, but it's not like, you know, 4,000, like there's a new company announced last week that they said that 4,000 a month you have to pay for the service. 
and they do the same thing we do. I'm like, that's a pretty high price point. There are maybe five people will buy it, but I wouldn't pay 4,000 a month for some service, even if like, you know, Navy SEAL person says it's cool. Um, or some podcaster. <laughs> yeah, some influencer, it. yeah. <laughs> yeah, I mean, like, come on, like it, it doesn't make any sense. But no. the point is that um, the, the first adopters of these things, like what we do at Elo, are likely going to be the people who already are on the know, people who already are living healthier than most. Mm -hmm. So we are basically today making the problem worse in a way. We are people who kind of sign up to things like Elo or your clinic, they likely will have an advantage and they become really healthy. And then there are millions of other people who don't have the bandwidth, the time. They're working, you know, two jobs. They are, mm -hmm. they are stressed out. They, they don't have time for this yet. Mm -hmm. So it's really tricky that, you know, you, are, you want to, and I want to build a system that can impact a lot of people. Yeah. But today, unfortunately, we are living in a world where the price point is going to be inhibitor for a lot of people. And the time and, and the fact that, you know, there's never been a new product that has been adopted by the masses. There's always these few people who adopt them and then they trickle down over time. That's how new things always happen. Mm -hmm. um, and it's going to be frustrating at times in healthcare because we know the need is so dire. Yeah. And we know that, you know, like looking at companies that are doing good work here, like, like Verda Health. Uh, I don't know if people know about it, but um, yeah. if you have, you know, type 2 diabetes, Verda can reverse that. They can reverse type 2 diabetes with diet. Mm -hmm. And it works. Mm -hmm. They have done tens of thousands of people already. Uh, they will be one of the most impactful companies in, in our time, I think. Mm -hmm. And um, most people, if you take a textbook in a medical school, it says that the type 2 diabetes is an irreversible chronic condition. Mm -hmm. And now these guys are reversing with diet. Mm -hmm. Insane. Mm -hmm. And there's so much happening around nutrition, food and diet. Mm -hmm. Yet, like you said, well, we are still spending 70% of the money on managing chronic conditions that could be healed. We are not trying to heal any of them. We are trying to manage them so people don't die, incrementally doing stuff. We spent less than 2% of the you know, 4.5 trillion, $4,500 billion a year of healthcare in the US on prevention. prevention. And that prevention is mainly like you know, mammographies and colonoscopies, this thing, which are valuable, but we spent really no money or no time on focusing on why we are getting sick in the first place. Yeah. And I just want to put some like perspective on the figures that you shared as well. The amount of people that come into my clinic and yes, it's a, it's a specific, you know, demographic, but the amount of people that come in here and are on so many supplements because they have absolutely no idea what is actually doing anything for them, for them to spend $99 a month would be the cheap option. That would actually be the simple, really effective version. And, you know, most decent non-toxic workout support things are around $59 a month, in my opinion. Like you have to spend the money currently. And I, like you, we sit in this world of we we're either expensive or for us, we do really low-cost community wellness initiatives. But in order to prove the model to change the system, we need the early adopters who can spend the money to spend the money on the thing that is going to do something different. And for us, we especially are focused on psychiatry and mental health and actually having proven models to unquestionably every time change the mental health outcomes in specific situations. But that's a big project. And so we need people who can spend the money so we can then get it into an insurance model. Because I said in an event that we ran last night, it's like it's not like the insurance companies want to spend the tons of money that they're spending to keep you on these little yellow pill bottles for the rest of your life. That's not, they don't want that. That's expensive to them. But they are suffering from a lack of an alternative. And what I love about companies like yours and, and what we're doing here is like providing the alternatives and it is hard work and it is sometimes I feel like I just want to scream at people can you not see that this is the obvious thing to do um but it feels like there's a lot of this happening right now and I'm very overjoyed to be part of this movement where we're trying to change what the standard of care is and it, ha it has to be a movement like you said because um in the in the U.S. today um there will be more movement happening in many countries um, on the political side, on taxation, regulation side. It won't happen in the U.S. So it has to be the movement of uh, people like you educating other people, doing the good work of coaching and helping. And maybe every person that you help will tell 10 other people. Maybe they don't become your customers or clients, but, you know, they will then learn something new. Yeah. And in, 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 in the case of also, I'm, I'm more in you know, a place of building startups and using tech 
there, I, we need thousands of more companies like what we do mm -hmm. to do this. And I think all the time we can probably get it done. But mm -hmm. most importantly, what we need is uh, we need to have people who are looking in a mirror and taking responsibility of their own actions. I think you you already alluded that you know um, the the obesity crisis. It's not because you know people are lazy or people are not doing the right thing. We have a system that is making it so difficult to live right, yeah. and we have let the system to be built in this way. We have elected people to do it. We have let companies do things they have done. We have not regulated them properly. So it's not anyone's fault. It's not your fault if you are obese. It's a system's fault. But to do something about it, it's up to us all act. And you know, we can act in many ways. We can act with our wallet. We can decide exactly what we buy. Nobody's telling us what to buy. Yep. We can act with our voting behavior. Nobody's telling you how to vote. They try, but they can't. You can <laughs> vote as you want. Vote, vote people who can make a decision. Like we don't need another debacle about, you know, whether you know we should have a gulp soda, gallon soda or not. I mean, we should basically uh, label the bad food like they do in Chile, like they do in Mexico today. If you go to Mexico, you can see, you know, the, the processed food is labeled today, all of mm -hmm. it. Mm -hmm. wasn't a big deal, but it changed behavior dramatically. Mm -hmm. We also need to tax sugar like they do in almost every other country. We need to stop subsidizing food products that are bad for us mm -hmm. and you know, using monocrops only. Like those are easy things to do, but there's no will on the political front today. Mm -hmm. We need that will. And many of the things, by the way, that can be done that are influencing the food system will directly influence our uh, our environment and the, mm -hmm. and the climate sense. They mm -hmm. are they are hand in hand, and we have no no will on neither of them. Mm -hmm. And it just really sucks because you know we most of us know what should be done, mm -hmm. and we are not seeing those things happening at all mm -hmm. because they don't cost a lot of money. Um, mm -hmm. You know, with the small amount of money, like, you know, $500 billion, a mm -hmm. small part of, you know, this cake we are doing every year for, for healthcare in the U.S., yeah. we mm -hmm. basically make our, our agriculture regenerative. Mm -hmm. And that would be then better food. And like, like, you know, the food today that we eat, it's 50%, 70% less nutritious than it was 50 years ago. Yeah. What the hell? Like, how can it be? How? The, 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 the things are five times bigger that we mm -hmm. eat. Like the, every fruit, every vegetable is five times bigger than before. Mm -hmm. And they have the same amount of nutrition that they had before when they were smaller. Mm -hmm. that's, that's the problem. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And it's what I hear when I hear people like you speak. It's it's all of these tech companies that are going to be the voice of change, as far as I can tell. The tech companies and the, 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 edge, the cutting edge clinics, because if like you guys and the levels guys and the, you know, the aura guys and like, cause we're all saying like, we're trying to fix a problem, but we're a sprinkler against a raging inferno. If we don't change the food system, I feel like that's the way we get changed somehow. We all need to come together and actually say, we will not have this anymore. And I don't know whether like a big argumentative campaign will change the politicians ideas, but as you so rightly said, not voting for people and not investing in things will absolutely change the model. And it's like this direct to consumer stuff that we do. It's like, if we can, a big pillar of what we do here is experiential education. It's like, if we can educate you as to why we're doing the thing that we're doing, you are empowered to know why you need to spread that word and why things need to be different. And if we can educate, then we can really change the mindsets of the consumer level and almost have that reverse influence to try and change the system. And in that note, uh, we, we we can't help everybody, I think. Um, I think many people are already down the slope in a level that, you know, it's very difficult to help them. That sucks, but that's a fact. Yeah. And um, many people don't have the will. They don't have the interest. They they lost interest in life in a way that they're not going to ever do the change that needs to be too difficult to do. And, and that's sad, but it's a fact. So I would look at my, like these things, like the, the political will. Where can we agree to disagree? And where can we agree to agree? And I think one thing that you know most people could agree upon is likely our children, and mm -hmm. the fact that you know us as as parents, we decide what they eat, we decide mm -hmm. when they wake up, we decide what they wear, mm -hmm. and now we are deciding to give the keys for the big food companies to start giving this poisonous, the worst type of crap that you don't like to eat that they're feeding now the kids in school, and that's happening now since five up or even four up years mm -hmm. old. And we don't have we don't have a, an example today anywhere in the world 
where we would have people who've been eating this crap since they were born. We right. are the first ones, the first 30, like the millennials are the first ones that some of them have eaten this crap. Their problems in health are much worse than the 60-year-old problems. If yeah. you are 60 today, you're lucky because you didn't live up your childhood in a way that the current ones are living. Mm. So the problems might be 10 times bigger in a moment if we don't do anything. But we can't even agree to make the school food to be relatively reasonable. And I mean, I have mentioned many times that, you know, Michelle Obama had vegetable garden in the White House, and then she was inviting great uh, educators, chefs, nutritionists, um, you know, activity, you know, uh, advisors mm. to talk about what to do with kids. Mm -hmm. And she couldn't get that through because the food lobby killed it. The food lobby killed it because they were just they didn't like what she was doing. They wanted mm -hmm. to kill it on purpose, and they did it. Mm -hmm. That that's how strong uh, the the lobby is today in in DC. Mm -hmm. And it feels like we can't even do it for the kids. Like why? It just is. It's it, it's insanity. And I feel very strongly that there is there's an apathy that is creeping through the population now in terms of we're powerless to change it. Like, as you just said, even Michelle Obama can't fight the food lobby, then, then, you know, how, and I keep coming back to, well, maybe one person, despite being first lady, despite as powerful as she was, can't, but on mass, like, can we, cause like, there has to be a way that we change this. Cause I can't like you, I, you know, I'm, I remember sugar being around when I was young, but I certainly wasn't mainlining soda from the age that I was four. Like that just wasn't a thing. Um, and we, I, I don't even understand why it's up for debate. Like, like there's no way that a soda is healthy. So there's no way that I should eat it, drink it as an adult. There's certainly no way I'm giving it to an in, impactful child. This is just insane. Um, but yeah, it's in, it, I, it has to change. Like, I just keep coming back to my optimism of like, please, can it change? And I feel like it's companies like yours that are really like changing the way we think about how complicated this is. Because when I get to the apathy thing, oftentimes people are like, it's really complicated. It's really difficult. It takes time and it takes money. And what I've heard from you today is that Ella is really like actually making it quite simple. And it's simple enough right now. And it's going to get even more simple as the years progress. And I, I think the, the missing piece today that um, I think we know works, and I mean, we have millions of case studies, and you know, you you do that work every day. When you take a person and you work them with one-on-one, -on -one, um, you can make a behavioral sense happen. You can help them to, to realize what to do. And, you know, it's not that complicated in that. So I, I, have, a, I have a high hope that, you know, now we are, we are moving from this era of uh, uh, internet and, um, and then the smartphones, and all these, you know, different sensors. We are moving into era of AI, and mm. all of us have heard about, you know, ChatGPT and you know, OpenAI and the Bing doing their thing, and Google is now running. We are now in a in a spot that I'm my mind is blown away. Mm. What you can do with these things today is, I don't understand it, and I've been looking at this space for <laughs> twenty years, and I work on this every day. <laughs> You're right. And the people who are building these, that I know, some of the people who are building the things that now billion people will use, uh, they don't fully understand how they work. But what yeah. you can do with them in next year or two, and we are we are you know working on this at Elo as well, you can build a a personal coach on anything. It could be yeah. you know um you know exercise coach, it could be nutrition coach, it could be a, a doctor, it can be a writing coach, it can be anything. But you can create those. And now we have we have not that many people. We have maybe 100,000 people who help educators. What if we have uh, an app in everybody's pocket that can be a coach for you and can help you to do things? That might be the unlock that can help us to get, get there. Because I think now the you, you said it really well, and I, I really, I 100% agree with you. I didn't know it two years ago that ELO would have the biggest team in the team today is, is the coaching team, dietitians. And we have, you know, educators and, you know, doctors and stuff. That's the biggest team in the team. And I didn't know in the beginning we need that. But mm. if you don't have the human involvement, mm -hmm. you don't have the credibility. You, you can't make people change behavior. It's like the personal trainer. You know, we all love to buy the gym pass every January. And we love to stop going there in February. But the people <laughs> who hired the personal coach or the trainer yeah. uh, and the retainer, you cannot go there because they are there. 
yeah. you have to go there as well. And then yeah. when you go, you feel great about it. So yeah. same thing here. We want to align and have a person that you are connected to, you meet and you have a relationship. It will keep you honest and accountable. Yeah. And I think it's interesting when we talk about AI, we were talking about um, a piece of uh, VR software that you can use during a ketamine uh, therapy session last night. And I mean, this this stuff is fascinating, but the, the secondary fascinating piece is that currently that is done with a facilitator who can watch what you're watching and help you and support you through the journey. But simultaneously, there is machine learning happening with the facilitator to then create the data to then replace the facilitator to actually have an AI coach through ketamine-assisted psychotherapy. And when you get to this point, you're like, this is this is really cool. And I and I don't get frightened of like, oh, it's doing me out of a job. I actually get really excited because it makes it affordable, available, and it just gives everyone the same chance. And also, <laughs> we were speaking to our doctor yesterday and he was saying, um, he's using some, he's using like chat GPT, actually Jasper to, to write some responses to things. And what it's currently doing is giving references. Cause these articles you can like say with references, but he being him would check the references. And sometimes these references are just totally not there. You like click on it. It doesn't, it's not the paper. It's not. And he was like, it's this machine hallucination that's happening. And essentially what the AI is doing is going, we think this paper should exist. We think these these authors are probably the authors that should write it. So, And I'm like, this is going to change the face of scientific research if we let this kind of start to drive the needle of what we're actually looking at, which could either scare you like to death, which it does some people. But to me, it's like, I would trust that much more than I would trust the people with the money driving the scientific research. And that's where I get excited because I'm like, this world is just about to explode. And I love being like in, in the kind of investigation of it. But like you, I do not understand it at all. I ceased understanding when we kind of got to Bitcoin. And then I was like, <laughs> and blockchain. And then I was like, oh my God, my brain, no more. <laughs> and it's it just, you know, like uh, the, the neural network is, um, so we could talk about another hour. Um, I just yeah. spent that hour talking with people who are on the know. But the, the, the dilemma here is that the, the neural network, how it works, it basically is uh, guessing the most likely word that is the right response. And then it will guess the, the word after that and a word after that. It does not really know what it what is saying. saying. Yeah. It's just guessing it in the right way. But then it also can write code. It can also behave like a human. And mm -hmm. I think the thinking now is we know that our brain is a neural network and it works in a in a fairly same way. And think about your own, like we are talking now, like where are these words coming from? We mm -hmm. we parse them together. I don't have a you know a syntax ready for the next minute. I'm inventing as we go. Yeah. So it's the same way, and that's why these things are becoming now so powerful because you feel they're real because they think like we do. They mm -hmm. create these things like we do, and mm -hmm. yes, they do. You know, get it wrong at times, which is kind of interesting. And they invent things. Like I mean, the best way to do it is that you know, if you have some stuff about the web on, about you, go ask the ChatGPT who is who is you, who is Ari Tull, and I've done it now every you know different iterations the last few years. And a year ago, it got it all wrong. Like I had invented this and this company and I had, like, <laughs> it, didn't, it didn't make any sense. And right. now they're getting it right. So, but I was like, how can it, how can it fabricate? There's like a thousand articles about me. How can it fabricate me what I have done? I was like, what the hell? That's really weird. Uh, but yeah. now it's getting better. But that was a one, one test you can do because you kind of know who you are. Or maybe I forgot that I built this one company. Uh, yeah, yeah, like company. <laughs> Well, it would be good if like we could like have this fabricated thing, but it's a really great invention idea. And then we start to like, yeah. The other thing that I was thinking, and this is a totally sidebar, but it occurred to me earlier, it's like what I'd love to have is tech in our, these smartphones, we carry them everywhere. What I'd love to have is like geofencing around junk food restaurants so that the moment based on your, you know, metabolic health or weight or whatever the metric is, the moment you walk towards a fast food restaurant, it pings you on your phone and says, not a great idea. There's a salad bar three blocks down, like go to this. And it like, then it opens up Apple maps and or Google maps. And it like literally tells you how to walk there. 
that would be exciting for me. Total sidebar, but yes, I just thought, you know, there's so much we can do to help people do the right thing. And just like, it doesn't need to tell me that I haven't stood up in a while <laughs> when I'm standing up already. It could do more. And we, we talked about the aura quite a bit today. Yeah. And mm-hmm. I think it's a good, interesting company because we both know it well. Mm-hmm. We wear it. Um, and I think we we get some value out of it. But why I think it's such an interesting case study is that the, the ring itself, it doesn't have a light. It doesn't have a vibra. It doesn't do anything. It's only a sensor. And then you can look at the data if you want, when you want on the phone. Yeah. So it's not on your face. It is ambient. And I think mm. that ambientness is the key element of everything. Mm. And we are trying to be at Elo very thoughtful that Elo wants to be an ambient. If we don't need to bug you at all and use the right things, great. If we need to bug you to do the right thing, that's what we're going to do. But we don't want to have like a, we don't need more like daily active engagement metric biohacking no. or growth no. hacking stuff. No. That's what they have done for, at, you know, TikTok and elsewhere. And they lure you in there 50 times a day or every phone. You, you, I think you get the phone today in your hand 100 times and open it 100 times a day. Yeah. I mean, that's really, really, really bad for your, your brain. Very bad. I love that. I love that you made that point. It's always come. I've always questioned why Aura is so sticky as a device, why people like to wear it. And I think it is because it does nothing. (laughs) It just sits there and doesn't bug you and doesn't feel like it's an inconvenience. And people comment on it and say, oh, is that one of those Aura rings? And you just get to have like this like conversation. Um, But there is so much actionable data. So so yeah, the the contemplation of what's ambient versus what is actually interruptive to the process is interesting. I have loved chatting with you today. Uh, Is there anything I haven't asked? I know you have a whole investor side of your mind as well and and your activities and you're investing in like lots of companies. Is there anything that I haven't asked that you'd like to explore today and explain to my listeners? I I think we've been been covering a lot. And um, and I think for me, I mean, why why I do this and why I try to get the word out is that I think the most difficult thing today is to build a new, it's not hard to build a new thing, it's really hard to get the new thing going yeah. and, and get the word out because we mm-hmm. have so many different, you know, messages bombarding us on every every left and right. There's so mm-hmm. many things in the world today that you you might want to try, mm-hmm. and um, and my goal is to just you know like try to build things that are are impactful and meaningful. And I live mm-hmm. for the feedback. So if anyone wants to you know test Elo or supplements or a protein, mm-hmm. uh, give us the feedback. We are mm-hmm. we are pretty early, and we are all about trying to make it right. I mean, mm-hmm. my, I tell. I tell a lot of people every year who are building a new thing, I'm telling them that, you know, if you believe into something that you have a, this will make the world a better place or it will have an impact, positive impact, go and do it, put put everything you have behind it. Mm-hmm. But then I also tell many people that not everything that can be built should be built. Not everything that, you know, you might be good at cool is needed. Yeah. And uh, because we don't need like 50 more photo sharing apps or 50 more TikToks in the world. And I'm trying Please to maybe. advocate, and I've been talking about this for many years, that um, to tech audiences, to do gaming audiences, I've been talking for many years about if you want to make a difference, it's maybe not to go work for Facebook or somewhere, but build a new thing in these areas that matter, like healthcare, mm-hmm. education, I think mm-hmm. politics and the civil you know, discourse, and, and also nutrition. And there you can make a much bigger impact. I mean, mm-hmm. if you go to Google, you're going to be one one person, one person. among 100,000 yeah. people. But if you build something new in a space like like nutrition, you can make an impact. Um, mm. It's a lot easier. So that's been kind of a lot of people, they they just go where the, where the excitement is. Like they, you know, mm-hmm. many people I know, they went to crypto and, you know, many people made a billion dollars of money last, you know, a few years. Great. I mean, they, now they have money, but I don't think they're going to stay in crypto. Now they're maybe going to AI. And many mm-hmm. people are going to mint again a billion dollars in AI. Mm-hmm. Um, and I think AI is going to be one of the more fundamental. I mean, mm. it's going to be the trend. Like nine, think about 80s. We had a recession in 80s mm-hmm. and we we dipped out of it because of the internet. Yeah. It, it happened. Then we had the bubble in 2099. Then we invented the, you know, the smartphone. And that yeah. smartphone connectivity, local, social, local, mobile, it mm-hmm. grew us until today and yeah. now we have another crash yeah. and then i think the next you know growth yeah. level will be the ai yeah. so we kind of go yeah. we go up down up down but we always end up higher and yeah. people are saying now that we might have 10 percent of gdp growth because of ai in the next decade that's yeah. more than the internet had back in the days so we're yeah. talking about most fundamental thing today that might, might have happened ever in, in all of our lives and i would mm-hmm. advise everybody today 
to don't think it as a funny toy, but think yeah. this as a beginning of the end in a way. And I'm, I'm for example, doing it now in a way that my team, we're going to educate and make sure that my team, end of the year, everybody in the company, including mm -hmm. dietitians and doctors and, and, you know, support people, they will be fluent in AI. And they will use AI every day in their work. That's a mandate I have for the team. I, I'm going to do everything I can to, to educate them, bring them tools that can do that. And these people yeah. are going to be very sought after employees in yeah. the next you know, couple of years when they're going to be fluent when most people don't really know. Yeah, I love that. Thank you for sharing that. And thank you for kind of like really driving that home because I freely admit that I have this, I really need to get my head around this and also, oh, it's another thing to do kind of energy. Um, but I think you're right. And then so many people have said this, so many bright people in the space have said this to same, the same thing to me in recent months, you know, this, you need to be on board now, you need to get it now. Um, so thank you for that. I just want to circle back before we close today, because I just want to make sure you know, and all, all of my listeners know, um, since uh, this podcast did very well in like all the Spotify listings over Christmas, I was fairly inundated with emails and requests and stuff at the beginning of this year from podcast agents and people and all the things and wanting to come on. And I had quite a few of these like, we personalize supplements to your fill in the blank companies approach me. And I do actually vet people. I don't just say yes to everyone. And when I clicked through the link that I got about you and I kind of looked into it, it is the only company out of all of them that I was like, actually, this I want to talk about, this I want to bring onto the podcast. And I've always been like that in healthcare. It took me forever to put my name to a genetics kit and forever to even talk about that in public. And so I just really want to make sure that my listeners are, are aware that when they go to the show notes, because I'm going to put links to all of the products that you've mentioned today in our show notes, this isn't actually isn't because I've tried the product either. I am going to go and do this myself. I'm going to go and get some stuff and like work it out um, because I think it's relevant and I think it's really interesting. And I'm also going to get my CEO involved in, in the recovery powder because I think th these things are really interesting, but when people click through, it's because I actually looked at this and I looked into the science and I looked into all the data that you guys were looking at. And I was like, actually, this feels legitimate where a lot of other companies feel not. So I just wanted to make sure that everyone was aware of that before we close out today. And hey, big thanks because it makes it means a lot to me because you know we we are early. We we you know we are trying to pour our heart into this mm -hmm. and uh, and uh, and we are trying to do it in the right way. And uh, there's a lot of um, unsavory stuff happening. In, and I'm not, I don't come from supplement space. So the first time I used supplements in my life was when we started the company. Oh, so great. we, of course, hired a ton of people who know the space. Well, I know the the the, the behavioral change. I know the, the digital physical component. I know how to build really, really great yeah. experiences. But I didn't know specifically about the, the pills. So the mm -hmm. first person we hired on that was a scientific, you know, um, a PhD um, person mm -hmm. who became the science leader for the whole company. And yeah. she read herself and her team, 6,000 scientific articles. These are mm -hmm. human trial, clinical trial papers about mm -hmm. how, what impacts what. Yeah. We picked out of 1,000 different ingredients, we picked 80 that mm -hmm. have enough scientific evidence and meta studies. And we only mm -hmm. picked those. We didn't pick, for example, melatonin. There's not enough evidence. We didn't pick mm -hmm. up many other things because there's not enough, like even NAD or NR, we did mm -hmm. not pick them because there's not enough evidence. There's many things people take today that likely mm -hmm. work, but we couldn't pick them because there was no evidence enough. And then lastly, what we did, we hired another person in the very beginning uh, who came from um, the only company who has done testing for supplements, Lapdoor. So he was mm -hmm. the science leader there and see, he had been testing these products for years and he brought his knowledge and we tested every product we bought into our formulary in a third party lab. And mm -hmm. we found out that many of them were not good enough and mm -hmm. we threw them away. So that was the beginning because I mean, if I want to eat my own dog food, literally, like I'm eating this, my wife is eating this, my my kids right. will soon get. Yeah. I mean, I don't want to put stuff in my my body that I haven't validated. Yeah. And if if you buy from Elo, I'm eating the same stuff myself, and I I'm very 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 uh, careful what I do in my life. Yes. On my body. 
Yeah, I love that. And that, you know, I think I got that from your website as well. Just the feeling I was like, this feels like they're all drinking the Kool-Aid of their own making, which is a good thing in this case. It's like they're all absolutely wedded to this product. And there's a few companies in the health tech space where I really feel that. And it's um, it's it's lovely to see that people, it's not just this money-making mercenary supplement. How much titanium dioxide can we put in this product to make it absolutely ineffective, but super, super, super cheap? It's actually, oh, we can like deliver of a really good quality because we would we would put this in our elderly parents are you know maybe not children because we don't really want to be supplementing children but you know the teenagers as they're really growing we can put it into all of those people the people that we care about the most and ourselves and that is a ringing endorsement so everyone needs to go to the show notes if just a point of question Ello is available only in the US right now where is it available only in the US uh you can buy the uh the smart recovery uh, protein powder you can buy it in every state mm-hmm. including alaska and and hawaii um the the supplements today you can't yet buy in new york we've been we've been working now two years to get the uh, right to do blood testing in new york yeah. we we still don't have it after yeah. two years so new york new yorkers uh sorry you have to go to new jersey and, and buy it <laughs> yeah there's always a workaround new york's always been this way for my uk listeners if you don't understand this new york every lab test you just can't do it's like this like weird hinterland of like no medicine can happen um so so it's i i'm uh, impressed that you're actually even bothering to work on it that feels like a, an uphill climb so thank you so much for your time today i have really loved talking to you and i've really loved hearing more about what you're doing and, and your view of this space it's really really been interesting thank you for joining me thank you As many of you will have noticed, I went immediately from that recording to order my own sample of Ello and I paid for it and I took the blood test and I have recently, just this weekend, received my um, supplements and the overview of why I need each of them and it is interesting. I may record a solo episode at some point talking a bit more about that but for now, if you have any interest and this is something that I do recommend, then please head to the show notes where you will find all of the links to Ello to their protein powder, to their supplements, to everything that you need in order to get yourself some very affordable, personalized nutritional support.